the tackle on the leg Flair went right to the leg once again and now the famous move by nature boy Ric Flair the figure four leg lock now considering what has all happened to Dusty Rhodes the pain has to be just unbearable at this time right in the center of the ring Dusty Rhodes has to stick it out get to the ropes as best he can now remember the match is continuing Flair's leg was on the ropes, as you saw right at the bottom of the screen. Now you see in your picture, beating on the bottom, on the mat, is Magnum T.A. Coming down, knowing that Dusty is in a tremendous amount of pain right now, coming down to try and help his partner, encourage him on. Just standing there in case, you know, something, you know, severe would happen. Unbelievable that he could stand it for this length of time. Dusty still in it, still with Ric Flair. As we watch the referee checking with Dusty at all times because Flair has it. Now look at the right hand of Dusty Rose. Trying to turn him, I think, at this point, Tony. Getting a third, maybe a fourth wind at this time. Trying to call up everything inside of him to turn around and turn around that figure four leg lock and then reverse it on Ric Flair. Look at Dusty. The fans encourage him on, and here we go, Bob. And he, he got it right there. Turn it around, and Flair reverses again. Turns it right around. Flair grabs the top rope right there, all of his weight down on the leg. And right there, as quick as that, a three-second count. And Ric Flair is the heavyweight champion of the world once again. As Dusty Rhodes, obvious, the pain as Magnum comes in. Just the pain just blocked him out right there as Flair used the ropes coming right down with that figure four. And for once again, the heavyweight champion of the world is Nature Boy. All right, Rick, it's August 9th, 1986, and Dusty Rhodes is fresh off his world title win over you in Greensboro. Just a couple weeks prior to this match, and a couple nights before, uh, Tully Blanchard actually injured Dusty's leg to the point where he came into the match with a heavily taped up. Now we're in St. Louis, and you win the title back with a pinfall from the figure four leg lock after cheating to grab the top rope for some extra leverage. And Now, did you, did you see that? Or is that just an observation you've heard about? Well, I mean, I may have witnessed it. <laughs> I might have seen it. Uh, is this the first time you won a match with the figure four being counted as a pin? Because I don't remember seeing that a lot back then. Uh, it must have been. It didn't happen very often, I can assure you. But it was a great match, and uh, the rivalry between Dusty and I have all good on in history is one of the greatest of all time. So, uh, so many great matches, so many great cities that we wrestled in. St. Louis um, actually worked out to be a great market for us later on, um, uh, as did Chicago and it's amazing. Wherever he and I went, we made music and we made money. Now, you had uh, held the belt for over two years prior to dropping it to Dusty, and then you won it back quickly. Why did Dusty only hold the belt for two weeks? Um, you know, I can't answer that off the top of my head right now. I couldn't. I can't remember. But I just think that his schedule required him to be spend so much time in the office and not as much time on the road. Um, obviously, he worked a lot, but... Um, at that point in time, the company was, you know, moving fast and expanding, and uh, he probably just elected to uh, just, you know, he liked having it for a short period of time, but he he was, uh, I think he, he was driven much more by stuff that uh, the creative end of the business. Uh, just a couple of months uh, after this, Magnum TA, who you heard mentioned in the clip at the beginning of this segment, uh -huh. have his, his horrific crash, and it would change his life forever. Had that not happened... What kind of push do you think we could have expected for Magnum? Oh, he would have been a champion eventually, at one time or another. I was actually in Birmingham, Alabama when I got the news and uh, flew home. And um, you can't imagine the horror story. He was in an iron lung back then. They didn't have the sophistication of the, of the life support stuff they have now. He was actually in an iron lung, the old metal things. And yeah. the only way that he could communicate was with his tongue touching a little lever above it. it. I was mortified. And actually, he didn't move for 30 days. He didn't move. So, he, you know, he's blessed to have, you know, to be back where he is, which is, is sad enough because he can't move his entire right side. He can he can get around. But uh, he was a great athlete, a great kid, and uh, had a phenomenal look. So I, I think he was destined. I know that if Dusty had this way, he would have been the world champion at one time or another. Over the uh, weekend, I had a chance to see Magnum and Duck Dusty into the Hall of Heroes in Charlotte, and I had a chance oh, yeah. to catch up with uh, your daughter, Megan. She was in attendance, and she mentioned that as a kid, um, she was going to the hospital every day to see Magnum. You would take him every day. Yep, I did. 
Yep, I went to see him every day that I had a day off. It was a terrible story. I felt so bad for him, and uh, yeah, I went to see him every day and every spare moment I had. Now, you know, you just you see things like that, just like we see illness now in young people, and it's just so sad. And you thank God for everything that you have. Uh, with this win here against Dusty uh, in St. Louis, you would hold this for better than a year before dropping it to Ron Garvin. Do you suspect that the Garvin spot would have been Magnum's spot had he not been injured? Um, you know, I would guess. You're, I would say that. Yeah, taking nothing away from Ronnie because sure. Ronnie was good. I just that the Johnny uh, Ronnie what Ron was not accepted nationally as much as he was in the south um where magnum i think had that had that national appeal and uh, a, a traditional handsome i mean incredibly handsome young guy with an amateur background and he, a good kid too so um but take nothing away from ron garb and hands of stone man we we had some classics <laughs> good lord great friend of the show bruce pritchard once told me that vince could have made magnum a huge star do you think that would have happened if he would have followed dusty in new york in 89 would he have been a wwf champion as well um he wouldn't have been a wwf champion as long as hulk was there okay 